so here we go at the bottom of the plot so uh here is a bed of random stuff there's a lot of um i've got a crow plant in the corner uh some red cabbage that was spares that i've just jotted in there and leave them for the butterflies probably um some calendula and nasturtiums i seeded oh this vine weed that is everywhere uh and these are self-seeded uh, Spanish black turnips. I'm trying to be quick because I think my camera uh, battery's going <laughs> to uh, shut down in a moment. So sorry if I'm rabbiting through this whole thing. But we've got spring onions are coming on now. Uh, my rhubarb i might get another harvest off that but i think i've pretty much done my rhubarb and just letting that grow on i've got a couple of spare sweet corns that i dotted in there um a couple of uh but uh, these are yellow courgettes that i've planted in the corners with some beetroot and leeks dotted in i cleared that bed the other day finally i've got a couple of um tomatoes there beetroot Again, some leeks. This over here is, uh, oh, what is it, garlic chives. That's a perennial. So I'm trying to get more perennials in my allotment now. That's uh, another variety of rhubarb. These are doing great. I popped these in about a week ago. These are my sweet corns. So I've covered them to protect them. These are not doing as well. Uh, but those ones are doing great. Uh, I popped this cover on because I've tried to keep the slugs off with um, this wool packaging I had. And it seems to have done the trick, but the birds were after it. So I've put that on to protect it. Um, here we go. I've dotted some... We'll start here. We've got self-seeded nasturtiums coming up. Uh, spring onions again. These are actually onions, but I'm using them for some spring and then I'll let some grow, carry on growing, but I'll probably actually have them all for spring onion. Uh, I can't remember if that's a butternut squash or a, a courgette, we're gonna find out. Um, these are a type of, here, they're not looking too great in this bed to be fair, but we'll see how they do. They're a type of, um, aubergine and more beetroot in here ah, puppy <laughs> is taking shade in my lowly sun choke bed i did a whole bed there but the artichoke has kind of shaded it out and only two have come up but that's going to give me a crop anyway so look how majestic that is that is just incredible but so many flower heads. I was too late to come and harvest them because they've now started to open up, but um, they look amazing. And they're gonna feed the bees, so I'm quite happy about that. You can actually dry the leaves and make a bitter um, herbal constituent out of these artichoke leaves. So I might do that because they're so long and dry them as a powder to use as a herbal remedy. Um, here, so I don't know if I took a picture of these, well you can see here. So these plants I put out in April when it, it was predicted we wouldn't get any more frosts. Even though our, the, our last frost date is the second week, middle of May. Um, but I took a punt because I grew these in January and I put these out and they all kind of died off and got very upset. So I nearly pulled them out. And when I come back to pull them out, they actually had started to regrow. Look at this. Now I do need to prune these. I've just pruned my ones at home and I got um, like two massive handfuls of offshoots because I've been lazy at pruning. But, um, but I will have a look at those in a minute. I need to tie them up a bit. But I can't, oh, there you go. How incredible is that? I've got my first tomato. Wowza. And look at the state of that. I mean, it was literally all that. 
um, and uh, suddenly I came and the top shoot was uh, green and I thought oh I'll just give it a go and look at how, how it's come back to life it's incredible it just shows you that things want to grow um, now here's my walking onions my Egyptian walking onions again another new perennial I'm trying surrounded by uh, my garlic I'm so jealous because I don't have any garlic scapes and I keep seeing all these videos about everyone making garlic scape pestos and things and I'm so jealous I don't have any but um oh well I'll know for next time now ah oh, that's going to seed that's not too good but otherwise I might have to pull these soon then I mean look that's good red onion here these are all from apologies we've got a bloody truck now coming along I hope you can hear me okay um, these are all uh, sets onion sets it's the first time I'm trying onion sets so but I've done really well with onion seed this year so actually I'm just gonna do seed next year uh, but here we go so yeah that's that so that's onions. I did have carrots, which I harvested a couple of days ago. Uh, here's a small patch of my early um, corn. This is coming on beautifully. Uh, this is a whole two beds, two little raised beds uh, of my asparagus. So this is first year and the fronds have finally come up I've only got two or three so I'm hoping that's not a bad sign but I did have that um, straw on it and I've taken that back and then they did come up so I hope the straw hasn't had any fronds on it that's disturbed that but this is my brassica bed so this is doing really well these I've got two cabbages that are hearting up three three that are hearting up they're still getting nibbled I literally have taken between these beds so you can see I've got gaps because they're small beds together don't know if you can see any at the moment um they are I literally got seven double handfuls which I threw back into the hedgerow so the birds could have uh, lunch but seven handfuls in there it's just incredible you see they're still eating my kales but i've got these anyway so i've been using these because they're so amazing i've literally just been harvesting the outer leaves because i'm impatient i can't wait until they're hearted up properly but i've got two that are really doing well hearting up and the rest are all being nibbled and a bit slow so any good leaves i've got i've just been harvesting chopping up and putting in the freezer and we had the most incredible stir fry the other day i've never had i've never enjoyed a stir fry so much in my life um which is ridiculous but it's it just goes to show how enjoyable it is to grow your own food it was just incredible so uh, these are cabbages cabbages here and a cavolo nero kale and there's a red um a red kale in there i can't remember what that one's called these ones look these are starting to heart up now as well slightly these are um over here i've got my raspberries but they've all started to creep over here as you can see they're in the asparagus bed as well but what i've done with those is just harvested them because they're all new shoots and I'm drying them at home for raspberry tea. So um, this is what I've come up for today. I'm going to do my second harvest on kale, my kale bed. The kale is growing so beautifully. It's such a shame because kale, I'm the only one in our family who can eat kale. My husband is really allergic to it and the children really don't like it. So um I'm really enjoying it, but it's the one thing that I'm really, really successful at growing at at the moment. And it's the one thing I can't really feed my family. So it's a, a bit annoying, but incredible at the same time. So I'm enjoying it. So I'm going to harvest that. I've got garlic as well. This is all green garlic I've got dotted around. I did dot some, there's some volunteer potatoes there from the previous plot owner. 
they're here as well and in here i've just let them grow to get another harvest but um the previous owner must have had potatoes here and i just they keep popping up every year uh sorry this is such a scattered video <laughs> um so all my fruit bushes my rosemary's gone over now but i'm going to try and remember to take some of that back as well because i'm making some herbal salts at the moment i've already made a sage one i need to harvest all of that so i can make more sage salt there as well and some of the rosemary look my berries are starting to come in now I've got red currants uh, black currants are coming in uh, i harvested the other day i got a beautiful harvest of gooseberries it's the, i've had that plant for three years and it's the first time i've got a harvest of it um sorry let me just take you around because i can't get back out now it's the first time i've had a harvest off it and um oh look this is what i want get over there and eat the black fly so yeah there were, i left a couple on because they were still growing but um i've never really had it's the first harvest i've got off this plant and it was abundant there were, i've got two tubs from this small plant of gooseberries and i've never really had uh gooseberries before and oh my gosh they were absolutely well they are absolutely divine i put them in the freezer so i can make puddings because i nearly ate the whole lot um i'm gonna have that now oh delicious but they were um sorry you're just hearing me chomp away now i'm being rude they were absolutely delicious so um i'm really really glad of those now here's my tubs of potatoes they are growing um i don't know you can't see in this one I did have a look the other day to see if I could see anything. The ones at home in the front garden, my shady garden, are doing really, really well. I harvested some, I'll go up there in a minute. That top bed there, I mulched with straw. They've grown really quite well, but the slugs are loving the straw. So that's one thing I won't do again this year. I think it's actually the straw I think he's great for drier climates. I know in America they use it a lot with the roof stout method, but here it just harbors the slugs. I don't think it's successful here because it's a wetter climate and we're a bit more, more moist. But um, they were my rocket potato bed. And uh, I literally got, off three plants, I got a handful of mini potatoes. The biggest one was like that. I got two or three of those. And I made a little single meal out of them, but um, that's quite disappointing. Uh, so here are some of my beans. I don't know what they are at all. I put some in the, this is just my method of gardening. I'm impatient. So I put some of my, some directly sown. Um, this is a, this was my idea look i mean here you've got my um rhubarb leaves on my rhubarb harvest i've used those to mulch and to feed the the soil these ones here i think are blue lake those ones at the end i've no idea what they are they look very different um it's possible that they might be the yellow beans i can't remember the name of them gold something they look very different these ones all around the outside i think these ones are uh, a yard long but i can't be sure or they could be purple beans i've got a massive selection of different beans so they're going to be a surprise anyway when they get on there um, here was my, sorry about the noise again, it's bloody nuisance. Um, here, the building houses, just here, and look, for three weeks now they've left this open, they dug this out. It used to be, I was really sheltered, 
and they dug it out accidentally um, for their pavement, new pavement that they're putting in there. But I've asked them to put gate on it now, so at least I have direct access and it's easy for me to put my horse manure supply. Um, so that's good in that sense, but they've taken the gate off for three weeks. So I've had like an open plot for three weeks now. They're not a very good company at all, this building company. Uh, and that's my rant over, I'm sorry. <laughs> so here, this was my carrots and my onions, but you can see the onions and the carrots are not doing really that well. Uh, these are my white um, onions from Seth and the carrots, but all the, I, I've just been too late to the, um, to the weeds on here this time, but I did do a bit of weeding the other day, but I just, it's difficult for me to get down here and keep on top of this stuff. That's why this has done really well. So the weeds are starting to come through, but I'm so pleased because the one thing that I've really struggled with is the weeds because I can't come daily or, you know, I'm lucky to come once or twice a week uh, to the plot. So, and if I do, it's to come and water. It's not to do jobs. Once it's busy like this, I can't keep on top of it. So that's why I try and grow as much as I can at home and then grow the bigger stuff here, like the potatoes and big, the cabbages and stuff that I can't, don't have space for at home. And I'm trying to do more perennials so I can just leave them to get on with it and kind of be less work down here and have more work at home where it's easier for me to nip into the garden every now and again and get on with things but things are growing I did have carrot root fly down on the other bed down there so I did harvest those ones the other day and I got tiny tiny ones uh, but we had a lovely I used those in the stir fry as well and they were gorgeous so it still made a meal uh, I'm wondering whether to harvest. Some of these have actually come on a bit, so I'm wondering whether... No, they're not really good enough to harvest yet. They'll be tiny, but... They... Yeah, it's a, such a mixed bag. They are, Some of them are growing, and then some of them are just not. This is where it was really heavily weedy. I mean, the carrots... If carrot root fly's not got them by now, I don't know. I mean, here you go. Look, this is... These were sown in February, I think. And yeah. Oh, that's not too bad. I mean, it's not great, but I might just pull these out now because I don't, carrot root fly is gonna get them. I haven't, I can't really cover them because it's full of poppies and stuff. So I'm gonna do that because the carrot root fly is gonna get them otherwise now. So I'm just gonna take them and have another meal of tiny carrots. Um, and I'm going to do my carrots in tubs now. I just bought some new tubs, so I'm going to do those in tubs. Uh, I've got a couple of see, parsnips that I grew in February. There's a couple along this row. I had two rows of them. I've just taken the peas out of here, so I need to do a big hoe. And what I can do, if I can harvest this bit, I'm just going to give up on this bit and just hoe it so that I can kill the weeds and get stuff growing again in it. I might put, I might just do all of this in potatoes for the winter. Um, that might be easier, I think, probably. Uh, but I have got some and I've got now, here you can see I've got some, uh, some more onions, of dotted onions in along here, spring onions. These are starting to come up now, these cabbages. They don't look like they're doing much in the way of hearting up, but again, I'm happy to just use the leaves. Uh, broad beans, complete failure this year. We're not massive fans of broad beans in my family, but I do like to grow them. And I'm just happy, to, I'll just fix some nitrogen into this ground here because I've not done anything for the last few years to the top of this. So now, um, next year i've got my over here i've got all my horse manure so i'll just spread that across and let it um do its thing over winter and next year it'll be gorgeous here but for now these haven't done well at all so you can just see it we have sandy soil here so it needs improving 
with the organic matter, but little self-seeded nasturtium there. Uh, and then the rocket. So they haven't done amazingly here, but they did, they've done all right. But if I show you, they, I mean, the straw has done brilliantly for, look, there's one there. Yeah. Go and let the birds eat you. Um, but yeah, look, I've got, so if I do a quick harvest of this one, might as well. They've grown, I mean, the moisture is fantastic, but look, there's another slug there. It's just full of slugs. They've just had my whole crop, so it's really disappointing. But, yeah, look, see, slugs. Actually, that's a, um, a centipede in there, <laughs> made a home in the slug hole. There you go, great though, look at this. Yeah, the slugs have all had these. Maybe I'll, oh look, there you go. Can you see that? So, yeah. So I kind of, I'm not expecting much. Maybe I'll get a meal off it if I'm lucky. I'll harvest that, but it's, I would consider that another failure. But these are my, um, single seed potato challenge um, potatoes that I've just done under plastic and not done anything with <gasps> oh my goodness look at the state of that so, uh, let's just get those out look, all these slugs and snails sorry I don't I'm not looking at the camera so you've probably not got a very good view here but um yeah, they're ready to eat my single seed potato, challenge potatoes. But look, there's one already growing. So, uh, I left that off a bit. So, uh, <laughs> I think I can safely say I'm not going to be winning anything. Um, but it is growing. They are growing though, under that plastic. Um, so yeah, that's a success in that sense. Uh, but things are growing, but my kale is amazing. And these are some more cabbages in here. I don't know whether you can see them. They're not, um, they're not growing, uh, amazingly fast, but... This is this is the sandy soil. You can see how sandy and dry that is. Um, so there we go. I shall leave you now. I'm going to harvest these carrots and that um, kale quickly. That's what I've come up for. But I'll just leave you with this amazing poppy that's cropped up on the edge of the plot, and it's just bringing a bit of sparkle to the day so I'll leave you with that bye for now happy gardening everyone